Hello, so welcome to this online lecture on computer data analysis. So in this lecture, we are going to consider data definition, data encoding, and data management. So in doing so, let us consider one particular questionnaire. So this is a questionnaire that consists of two parts. So letter A is the personal information and letter B is life satisfaction scale. So going over with the questionnaire, so it consists of five items or five statements wherein the respondents will be asked to rate it from one to seven. So just to give you more about the questionnaire, so we have here the information about the questionnaire stating that this is actually from Diner et al. in 1985. So the reliability and the validity of the questionnaire was also reported in this document. And for the interpretation, so to interpret the data that will be gathered, so it means that we need to get the sum. As indicated here, the scores will be summed up and the higher the score, the higher the life satisfaction. So it is also included in this document that if the sum is 5 to 9, it means it is extremely dissatisfied. Until if the sum is 31 to 35, it is extremely satisfied. So if we will consider, for example, the response of Maria. So for example, our respondent is Maria and her ratings are the following. So she rated 5 for the first statement, 6, 7, 5, 5, respectively, which means that since 5 means is slightly agree, so it means that Maria is slightly agreed that in most ways her life is close to her ideal, that so far she have gotten, she has gotten the important things she want in her life and that if she could live her life over, she could she would change almost nothing. Moreover, she agreed that the conditions of her life are excellent and she is strongly agreed that she is satisfied with her life. So if we get the sum, the total is 28. So that is by adding 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus 5. So a total of? 28 which means that if we will go back to the the interpretation of for the scale so 28 means that so it's within this range she is satisfied with her life so that is just the um interpretation for one particular respondent but remember that if we float the questionnaire we cannot of course do that to all of our respondents so what we need to do now is to come up with a summarized data that we will present later on. Because uh, if you remember, we described descriptive statistics as the giving a summary value to interpret the group or to give a summary of the group characteristics. So let's go back to our uh, our lesson. So. We have here the data definition and let's relate it with our questionnaire. So what are the important things that we need to consider here? So let's go back to the questionnaire. Uh, coding scheme. So which means that in encoding our data, we need to use code. Because in encoding our data in Microsoft Excel or in a statistical analysis program, as much as possible, we need to encode our data into numbers. That's why we have coding scheme. So let's say, for example, uh, using this questionnaire, let's say age, I can um, encode the actual data, so which means I do not need coding scheme. But what if the age is written, for instance, into 15 to 16, and then we have 17 to 18, and then 19 and above. Remember that some questionnaires use bracket. So what if the age is uh, in the questionnaire is 15 to 16 years old, 17 to 18 years old, and 19 and above? If this is the case, we need to make use of the code. So let's insert here a table. 
So we can actually give this a code. So for 15 to 16, let's give a code of 1. For 17 to 18, let's code this as 2. 19 and above, we can code this into 3. Or if you, you get the actual age, then you can just encode the actual age. Anyway, it's already numerical data. And then we can also now consider the next variable sex. So we can code male as the one and female as number two. So the number that you're going to use doesn't matter because as mentioned in our basic terminologies, this will just indicate that one variable or one category is different from another category. So I can actually interchange the values wherein one will be female and two will be male. It doesn't matter as long as the important there is that you will assign two different numbers. For current relation status, so we can just set this into, again, let's place the code here, 1 and 2. For socioeconomic status, so we will code this as, so if we will consider now the statements, number one is we have a lot of money, and the last statement is income is very either. So if I will consider giving codes for this, I will consider that lower number will be assigned to the very little and higher number will be assigned to a lot of money for consistency purposes. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. For life satisfaction scales, of course, I can use... The numbers assigned here, 1 to 7. So that's for the coding scheme. Variable names, what are our variables here? So obviously, our variables are age, sex, current relationship status, socioeconomic status, and life satisfaction scale. So we can consider giving acronyms when we encode our data. For age, since this is only three letter, then I can use the same word, age, also for sex. But for current relationship status, I will consider an acronym wherein I will write CRS. And this is now the variable name. This is called the variable name. While the label is the definition of this, this is if this means that this is a current relationship status. The same with socioeconomic status, I can use SES as socioeconomic status. And then, of course, the label is socioeconomic status. So, the variable name is SES while the label is socioeconomic status. So, for life satisfaction scale, instead of encoding or writing one to five statement, I can replace this or I can give a variable name saying that it is S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5 where S1 corresponds to the statement number one, or this is, in most ways, my life is close to my ideals. To my ideal. And until S5, which means that if I could live my life over, I would change almost nothing. So this is for data definition.